people even inside these labs have direct connections to the outdoors. This is where comfort meets conservation. We actually designed the landscaping to blend in with the natural vegetation here. A stunning display of architectural style and environmental stewardship. Which is, you know, a key mi mission of the lab. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory's Science and Technology Facility is one of the most green and clean places to work in the country. And it really shows our leadership to build low energy buildings. <laughs> It is the first federal building to earn the prestigious Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, or LEAD, platinum rating. It was a big milestone for the federal government, as well as the laboratory. This $22 million research facility in Golden, Colorado is sculpted for the surrounding landscape. The rainwater is collected and a portion of it comes off the end, and it goes down and it naturally flows through a series of ponds and retention basins. It's designed to make maximum use of our renewable energy resources. We can actually operate this lab without lights. We don't have to pay for any heat to do that. We don't have to pay a utility bill and we don't have to put any carbon emissions into the air to heat the building when the sun heats it for free. Cost effectiveness and energy savings are key to the success of NREL's Center for Buildings and Thermal Systems. This is the home base for the design team behind the state-of-the-art science and technology facility. Conservation is put into practice here. All the glass in the building is totally shaded. The shadow lines seen along the windows show the careful calculations of NREL's researchers at work. The path of the sun figures into the overhangs to prevent direct sunlight from heating the building in the summer, but to allow that warmth in during the winter. And that's free heating. The need for electric lighting is limited by letting the sun illuminate the space inside, sometimes through relatively inexpensive tubular devices positioned directly overhead. They all work by having a highly reflective tube that penetrates through the roof and then basically just pipes the light down to a lens. It's called daylighting and it's also one of the many environmentally friendly features at the science and technology facility. Controlled dimmers and motion sensors detect when the sun is doing its job and the lights inside are not needed. When they dim down, we don't have to pay for that electric lighting and we don't have to pay for the heat that they generate on the um, air conditioning side. Air conditioning is critical, actually, uh, because it drives peak stress on the grid. Those summertime power blackouts are due in part to the overwhelming demand for cool air. Engineers here are working on techniques to drastically lessen the electrical load caused by air conditioning. These approaches uh, usually involve evaporative cooling in some form, and they can use between one-half and, and one-tenth the electricity of, of conventional air conditioning. NREL tracks performance. In this lab, we uh, evaluate the state-of-the-art in heating and ventilating and air conditioning equipment. And teams up with energy partners to produce the prototypes for energy-efficient climate control systems. It's able to both cool and dehumidify the air, incoming air to the building in the summertime without any moving parts. Well, we're up here on the roof of the thermal test facility. NREL also works with manufacturers to dilute the demand for power by developing lower cost solar water heating systems. This particular experiment going on here is with flat plate solar collectors, typical of what's in a solar water heating system in a home. When you have an inefficient home, it's literally dollars just being burned up the stack. Keeping energy costs down is critical when it comes to affordable housing. That's why NREL offers guidance and training to help Habitat for Humanity build green. If they can build a very efficient house, then those low-income uh, occupants have that more, much more chance at success. <laughs> This innovative research is touching the lives of homeowners nationwide through a partnership between NREL and the Department of Energy's Building America program. Consulting teams work closely with builders to capitalize on energy saving strategies. Now the builders that are Building America is working with are going to 40 or 50 percent savings of energy efficiency. Eventually, as time goes on, to get where our mass production builders are building zero energy homes.
The goal is to develop zero energy homes for the mass market by the year 2020. A zero energy home produces as much energy as it uses. That energy consumption zeroes out or nets out with the renewable energy that's produced by solar thermal energy systems like solar water heating systems and solar electric systems that are installed in that home. Zero energy homes, commercial buildings that consume less electricity, it's all possible with a whole building approach, a process that incorporates environmentalism and energy efficiency. About 70 percent of the nation's electricity goes into buildings. From design to daily use, lighting to landscaping, NREL researchers are leading the charge to conserve energy, save money, and improve the way we live and work. The function of the building and the form really start coming together to make an energy efficient space, as well as, you know, happier occupants. It's a vision that's framing the buildings of the future. Be just as comfortable, be just as functional, but use half or less of the energy to do it.